Why does it say that I'm offline? That's weird. Oh, I'm good though. Just want to make sure that I wasn't offline for some reason. Twitch being twitchy. What's here? Hidden treasure. All oh, right. Spy notes. Fifteenth day of observation, 23rd of Burke. Back at the camp, brought in heaps of plunder, mostly armor and weapons, but this time a sealed chest too. Towards dusk, a man delivered rations of food and drink. Sixteenth day of observation. Messenger arrived in the camp before dawn. Caused quite a stir. They immediately organized a group to transport the chest. After dusk, I'll try to track down where they carried it to. Seventeenth day of observation. They didn't move the case that far away, just to the abandoned hut near the old mill. Set up a watch, so I wasn't able to get closer. 18th day of observation. Every man in the camp has been drinking since yesterday afternoon. If we attack now, we'd obliterate them. Too bad the commander only sent me, sent only one man, me, to this outpost. I'll try to sneak in tonight. If fortune smiles on me, perhaps one man will be enough. Yeah, I don't know about that. You seem to be, uh... Lacking some limbs there. So it was in that direction towards the... Looks like west? A little bit in southwest? Oh, okay, so it must be... He must be talking about that. Well, luckily, that's where we're going. So there's a hut by the mill, eh? Oh, wait, hold on. Do do do. I see wolves. Holy crap! Oh. Dead. Meat. Okay, let's start with the uh, the non-important resin, and we'll go here. Okay, obviously there's going to be a lot of hunting trousers here. What's this? Nope. I don't think I need a rope ladder. Scrawled notes. Another saddle? Wow. Oh, a formula. Scrawled notes. Things were going better and better for us. We've pitched a camp in the heart of the forest near the old mill and have already done quite nice for ourselves. Folks are poor, so they say, but squeeze them and something always pops out. Sack of grain here, a few crowns there. Not bad for easy work, certainly better than the army. At least we've got something to fill our, our bellies and the risk that we'll pay for this all with our lives. Well, it's still less than when we were charging the nilfs at Nihilus' orders. Wow. 
Okay. Oh, that was part of the quest. Okay. And I loot it all. Oh, I got only one swallow left. Where am I going now? I'm going. Okay, I have this up over here. And I think I'm done with this map. What quest do I have? Same ones. Oh, here we go. Deserve gold. Find the deserves cash. Where is this at? Oh. Little map. That's where I'm going. I see a building. There's bad guys. Who would be? Holy crap, these guys are level seven. Oh, am I gonna aggro freaking everyone now? Let's pull some guys out. Curses! Eat some meat, eat some meat. Oh. Victory! I need to eat more meat. More meat! Because I am a meat eater! And I can level up, too. So it's supposed to be here, the, uh... 
Wait, there's still a bad guy. Do that more often, Geralt. More often. Maybe it's inside? Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't look suspicious right there. What's the force bush one? Yeah. Insecticide sort of oil, okay. Cool. Enhanced saddle. Okay. Tamarian valuables. Scribe document. Take all. Himmy, no wonder we're losing the war. With cowardly cunts for soldiers. All it took were a few arrows and a wallop of a mace for seasoning, and that was that. Battle was over, and the whole convoy was ours for the picking. Maybe they were having such a hard time of it because of all the vodka they were carrying. Our brave warriors must have taken a sip from time to time with obvious results. When you're seeing double, it's damn hard to hit your target. Take everything we gathered to the cubby, then fence it, as quick, then fence it quick as you can. Except that showy parade shit. You'll have to bury or burn that. I reckon someone might recognize the insignia, and then we'll be in trouble. Cassius. Okay. So. Now I got. Yeah, that. Insectoid, insectoid oil. Apply the sword for additional effects in combat. Plus 10% attack power versus insectoids. Well, heck yeah. And... What else is there to do? Oh, okay, cool. If I wanted to do this one, where, where would I go? Right there. That's that's the next place I'm going. Okay. I'm going to recoup a bit. So I guess I need to go outside. I'll just go outside. See what's around. Oh. Nothing here? Okay. Ooh. Goat's hide, and there's a chest right here, too. I'll take that, I'll take that, and that. I'll take that, see what that's about. Oh, I want the inventory. Oh, wow, okay. Trying to carry too much crap now. What is your condition? Fifty seven seventy three. Okay, what? Okay. 
Okay. Find better stuff. I also found that enhance, yeah. So I want to equip it, right? Yeah. And wow, a hundred, but it's five. Five weight. So I'll keep them from now. Okay. More stuff to loot. Okay, that's, that's just sucks of grain. And can I? Nope, can't go up there. I don't think I can. Just doing a little bit exploring. Why is it taking me this way? Oh, I see. Hmm. I'm going to a graveyard during the evening. Uh, let, let's let's do it during the daytime, yeah. All right. Do 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 do. And this is the last place, right, on the map? Nope, nope. I still got three left. Looks like. The cemetery. A dead soldier tells me something. Hey, there is a battle here. Or... Oh, 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 do, 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 wraith. Um. It's 
Spectre oil, yes. And this, right? Yes, uh... Holy crap! I'm doing so bad, doing so bad! Did I beat it? I don't know if I beat it or not. Well, let's get this power then going. Okay. So, we're probably going to have a lot more of those guys. And... Might as well level up while I can. Should I actually investigate first before stepping inside? Here lieth the mortal remains of Florian Berius, who died childless in the flower of his youth, stricken by apoplexy while hunting. May Melitil Forgive him his sins against nature and his laws. Who died childless in the flower of his youth? Okay. Kinda. Don't really understand that, but whatever. Yep, yep. We've already done that already. Come on, girl. Alright, well, I don't know. What else do you accept? Uh, force push? I'm calling it force push because it's the force. Why not? And I want that. Yeah, I want. I want myself a sword. Is dead? Loot? Okay, there's loot. Is that it though? I guess I killed the wraiths? Okay. I guess I did. I'm not quite sure or not, but whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna keep my sword in my hand. I don't really see anything else. Ignite. Uh, 
game. Ignite. The hell is that? Oh, it's on the ground? Kind of weird. Can this one not ignite? Okay, well, there's his body. Letter from Richard Colgram of the Viper School to Evil, Evil, Evil Eye, Master Witcher of the Viper School. I have now found all the Lynch diagrams once belonged to our order. Certain complications have arisen, arisen, however. On the way back to our keep, I stopped to rest the night in a village in the Tamarian borderlands. The blasted peasants decided to make me into their scapegoat and accused me of kidnapping some beekeeper's brat. They took me to the local Lordling's castle for interrogation, during which they found and confiscated one of the diagrams. But do not fear, I will get it back. They did not find the others. I have invoked Tamarian common law and demanded a trial by ordeal, instead of submitting to the whims of this baronet. My request was granted, and tomorrow I am to cleanse the baronet's family crypt of wraiths. I expect this will prove a little trouble. Perhaps I will already have returned to our keep. I expect this will prove a little trouble. Perhaps I will already have returned to our keep by the time you see this letter. Like the furnaces, we'll have some fortune to do, Colgrim. Okay. So... I probably need to go see a blacksmith and get some of this stuff going. Can I... Can I light you? Are you lightable? Light? No? Yes? I don't know. I know you're lightable. I saw you just say ignite. Come on now. You know what? Does this work? Son of a... Oh! I saw it! Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's there for a split second and then it just goes away. Uh, the difficulty, man. Wait, so can I light this then? Can I point this up and light it? Oh, you actually have to go up to it and say night. Son of a monkey's uncle, man. Oh my god, I got it. I got the option. Wow. Ignite! Okay. So I pretty much just gotta ride the thing. Until. Oh, hold on, I think I had it. Ignite. Ignite? You piece of crap, ignite! So bad! Give me the option! Ignite. Do do we want ignite? Is this better? Probably because I'm not on the same level as that. Oh, you better ignite. Okay, I think I was missing one here. Yeah. Loot? Winds howling. It is. 
Ignite. 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 Oh, look at that. There's a guy here. I didn't even realize he was there. I heard something. I don't know what it was, but I heard something. Make sure I'm not missing anything else. Can I do? I guess that's it. Did I really finish all the quests already? Level 3. Complete your collection of Gwent cards. I don't care about that. Oh, that's completed. Uh, okay. But I still have three places left. So I'll do those. No. Did that already. Not again. I think I got a bunch of stuff in there. Save like a madman. Fallout 3, man, mess me up. All those freaking crashes. Roach, over here. Over here. Come forth! You... Horse. Move it. Ah. Coffee. It's like our chocolate milk for little kids. Mm -mm. Get off, get off, get off. Okay. This is like necrophages. I want to do. Oh, wow, I got so much crap here. Let's drop that. Mm. So I'm guessing the grayed out ones aren't all that great. So, yoink. Drop that. Drop that. Drop that. I don't want to drop the saddles unless I need to. Because I'm I think I'll get a lot of money for those. Wait, did I put, I don't think I even put on the uh necrophage oil. Yes, yes. Alright. And I'm set to fire. Magic. A place of power. Come on, ghoul. Oop, I can't see. I can't see crap. Okay. Let's go for that nest. Ghoul nest. Ought to just destroy it. That's what I'm doing. Come on, girl. Get with the program. And there's another one. Look at that.
like a pro. Let's first go for the uh, loot here. Nah. I guess some people die here. Died. Past tense. Gonna grab some of this loot. Because I don't know how long it's gonna stay there. I'd rather grab it. Because I'm sure the top. The uh. What's it called? The thing of power is gonna be there for a while. Yay! Ability point! Nope, wrong one. Do do do! Wow, I already maxed this out already? Jeez. Cool. So, I guess that's perfect unless I find another one and I don't know what the heck I want to upgrade because I have no more slots. Well, while I'm here, I want to take a look. See if there's any, um... Anything else? I don't see anything else. Oh, so this was just the two question marks, same spot. Okay. Wow. So I just got that. Wow. And then I'll go over here, sell some stuff. Ooh, I see a blacksmith too. See if I can get, uh, I think I got a steel sword. Oh, that's for, uh, to leave. I'm not ready to leave yet. Roach. Oh. I have something to loot there. Oh. That was the stuff I dropped. Okay, so if I drop it, it just shows up yeah. like, uh, like a loot item. That's nice to know. At least I. Oh, that stench. Nope. I got bucked off. Oh, fuck you guys. Give me my sword. Give me my sword. What else? Come on. You guys start it. Let's do this. Come on. Yeah. One thing about being in the water is you are no longer at the top of the food chain. This this is gonna go great. Now I gotta remember how to freaking swim. Dive. Oh. I see all something freaking big there. This is not good, this is not good, this is not good. Run! Run! <laughs> I saw skulls! Run! Get 
Get out of the water, man. Get out of the water. <laughs> so how the heck... You know what? Whatever. Don't need you. Go ahead and heal up here. I should do it, I think. All right. So, I want to go see a blacksmith. What is that, anyways? Spoils of war. Search here for loot left behind after a battle of s or skirmish. Yeah. There's um, a guy here. If I remember. And that was so bad. Faster. I got bucked off. Slow now. Okay. So those guys here. I could actually came here and whatever. Slower. Faster. Uh, down we go. Down we go. And we're gonna go this way. And yada yada this way. That's right. Do your push-ups right there. Right next to my horse. No. Make me. There he is. Are you here to spy or haggle? Let me see what you got. I first want to sell. Sell? S sell? Sell? Okay. Roach. It said a hundred and I can only get twenty two? I don't understand this game sometimes. It said a hundred. I could have swore it did. Makes no damn sense sometimes. Crafting. Junk. Okay. So... I want that, definitely. Steel sword. Crate item. Cool. And I want the silver sword. 
I need silver ingot. Can I buy silver ingot? Is that possible? You don't have a silver ingot, huh? Can I make a silver ingot? Yes, nope. I need silver. Oh, I could buy. 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 <laughs> You're short by two. Can I dismantle something that has silver? Is that a possibility? Pure silver, junk. Huh? Okay, so if I... I don't understand. It's pure silver. Right. I'll get silver ink from it. Okay. So now can I have the um Yes. Okay, so I got silver still. And that's it. Okay. So long. I need check my inventory and equip, right? And equip. Excellent. Now I can sell the swords. So I guess he does weapons, and I gotta find someone who does uh, armor. But before that, let's see here. Chance to poison the steel. Bonus experience from humans and non-humans. Okay. Chance to poison. Chance to poison. Okay. What do I have here? Psi intensity. Psi intensity. Chance to cause bleeding. Okay. Chance to stun. Okay. This is armor stuff, I guess. Okay. So bleeding we want for the steel. Yes. And do I really use the sign stuff that much? Stun. Hmm. Do spirits and stuff, do they get stunned? It's only a 2% chance it's done. Two percent chance is done. Two percent is very, very little. Very crappy. Alright. And now I'm going to sell this stuff. Are you here to spy or hack it? Show me where you're battling. Sell. Sell. I 
think that do it. Does he have anything here for me to buy? I don't think so. It looks like pretty much most of the stuff is stuff I sold him. Alright. So long. So do I have anything? Crafting. Warrior's leather jacket. Okay. So this would actually hurt me. But not against monsters. But I don't have wire. What else do I have? Alright, I have silver, I have the steel sword. So that's it. But that would hurt me armor wise. So is it really worth it? Only blacksmiths can forge weapons and only armorers can craft armor. Gotcha. Look for their icons on the map and mini map. Okay. So you are a blacksmith. And map. Okay, so that's that's an armorer's table. Oh no, my eyes looking around. Thing blacksmith. Okay, so that was a blacksmith. Where's a uh, armor smith? I guess. I could have swore that there was one here. I'm gonna go with that first. Where am I at? There's an herbalist with a lot, a lot of decoctions. I don't know if I want to buy them though. I only have 184. Whatever. I got my swords. And I need to go. Down. What? What did you say to me, boy? I don't know what these guys have against witches, but man, they lighten up. You know, you guys are lucky. Horses just like to shit everywhere. <laughs> I want to meditate for one hour. Yep, there we go. Got my stuff all filled up. the hell's your problem dude relax Th these guys are the ones that are doing the work you're just staying there and we're on the road again Wait, which way oh, do I need to go? Oh, it's pretty much the same place. Actually, I want to. There's an herbalist, isn't there? That I wanted to. Yes, here. I want to go here first, see if she no. has anything for me to. Uh, scavenge or 
I can't remember if there's anything to buy from her as well. It's been a while since I played this. Holy crap. No wolves. No! Go away. You don't want this. Hey there. Oh, are you shitting me? Really? Okay. Ooh. I hope it's okay. I'm taking all your herbs. Hope you don't mind. Actually, I'm making them mine now. Thank you. Okay, you got the plague. Whatever. That's your problem. Nothing I can do for you about that. Jeez. The plague! The plague! Get some antibiotics, man. You don't want that. Okay, I don't see any formulas or anything like that. I'm not gonna buy anything. What, what is this? Oh, okay, so I can go into my little menu as well. Good to know. Farewell. My beard is actually starting to come in pretty nicely. Lena, huh? Lena? Horse? Roach! Where are you, buddy? Why aren't you coming? I want to go here. That's it, Roach. Why are you screaming? Pick up a sword, man up. Hey there, Willis. You're the only guy I know that can do stuff. A return customer. Welcome. What can I do for you this thing? Craft something for me. I'd like you to forge something for me. Okay, it says buy twelve, price thirty-nine. I oh, is the price of the actual item. Gotcha. Okay, and then the gold thing actually tells how much he has available. Interesting. Okay, cool. Warrior's jacket. So long. And... Am 
minus five armor, but a lot of good stuff, I guess. Witcher gear requirement level one. Well, okay. So, okay, th so I guess green stuff means it's Witcher gear. Because all I ever see is blue or, or, um, gold background highlights for some gears so I'm, I'm presuming green is witcher blue is oh, I, I don't know the difference between blue and uh, gold because it's not like like a hierarchy of standard uh, superior legendary type from my understanding anyways Customer, welcome. What can I do for you this time? And uh, show me wares. Show me what you got. Do do do. Sell. Okay, you have a bunch of stuff here. Do I really need a bunch of that stuff? Diagram bounty. Oh, okay. At first, I thought I was like, "Oh, bounty." Oh no! It, is this stuff just like the like tempt me with my money? Because if I can like craft Witcher gear, is that all I need? And just pick up whatever else I need on the way. That's how I'm thinking, anyways. So long. Oh, do I need anything to? Repair before I head off. Sixty five, seventy six, sixty six. Mm. Probably couldn't hurt. A return customer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Show me what you got. Uh, there we go. Repair. How much is it going to cost me to repair? Repair equipped. 95. That's almost, you know, that's okay. It's okay. I'll find more stuff along the way. So long. I'll go pantsless. Pantless. And is there a table? No table. Man, you sleep out in the open like that? Oh, well, I guess you have to work too, but man, that's guys. That sucks. Poor guy. Looking to borrow a plow. Volunteers wanted. I guess we're ready to go. There's nothing else, right? Pfft, I don't care about the Gwent stuff. If I want to play a card game, I'll play a card game. Where's Roach? Have you close by just in case. Go ahead and save it just in case. That cat. A bandit? Why is there a bandit here? Can I talk to you? Something else you'll be needing. Uh, what are you selling? Got anything interesting under the counter? If you're pleased what you're after, have a look. Nope. 
Elf Guardian shit you will? Elf Guardian rule to your liking? What's there to like? She's the same as any other. They tax us, requisition this or that. But they do keep the peace in the village, I'll grant them that. You don't mourn Tamaria's passing? I mourned it around half a year back, when King Foltos was cut down. Now, now I just want peace. Farewell. Okay, that's kind of weird. Alright, I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to take a break. Going to refill the coffee. Uh, probably be back in maybe probably around three to five minutes. So, see you in a bit.
and back all right and coffee mmm elixir of life right here mmm <sighs> all right and I think we are about to leave this area Uh, is there anything else I wanted to be able to do here? You know what? Yeah, there's a chest. Can I not? Yeah, here we go. You know what? No, I'll wait till after. I think I'll have enough. Talk to Vesemir here. Jennifer's in Vizima. Got a few friends there, so. Something wrong. Look around. Trouble brewing. Who are they? Patriots. Drinking their seventh round for Tamaria. Fists starting to itch. Don't see any enough guardians. You'll find another fall. I'll buy some provisions for the journey, then we'll go. Geralt, we should stay out of it just this once. What happened to the lilies? Took them down. Took them down? To hang a golden sun on them? Cannot show to my workers. They'll come and burn the tavern down. Maybe it's true what they say. You fund of the Imperials. You Nilfgaard's whore. Well, let that pass. I know grief eats at your heart. You know shit. They hang my sister, dragged her out of the cloister like a dog. Said Nilfgaard's no place for superstition. That they don't fear the wrath of the gods. And you, do you fear it? If not for Annie, your child would have choked on its navel string. You owe your son to my sister to the no. birth, and you don't oh. fear the god's wrath. You don't oh. fear it, you cunt! Which is still Yannins. That's true. What the Emperor promised you, freaks? Your own land, like he did the elves once. Get out, all of you. We ain't going nowhere. Are oh, you gonna be kidding me? Are you? They won't back down now. I can see that. Oop! Battle! To battle! battle. Getting involved. Come on, let's go. That brawl, we didn't start it. Excuses, excuses. 
You've not changed a bit. Y Yen? How? I received a report about a witcher who'd appeared in White Orchard. I knew it was you, looking for me. I might have waited until you found me, but... Well, you know me. Patience has never been my strong suit. It's... Good to see you, Geralt. I... I'd even embrace you. Were you not covered in blood? Sorry. Wasn't expecting to see you. To be honest, this isn't at all how I imagined we'd meet. How did you imagine it? We didn't imagine you'd have a Nilfgaardian escort. Don't get me wrong, Yennefer. I'm glad to see you. But I do think you owe us an explanation. And I shall provide it. In Vizima. Ready your horses. Spent the last six months in the saddle. Haven't seen you for two years. Can't we take a moment to... Sadly, we cannot. Someone awaits you, Geralt. Someone who doesn't like to be kept waiting. Emperor Emir Var Emrys. Or, to those on more intimate terms with him, the white flame dancing on the graves of his foes. Doubt I number among that group. Far as I remember, last time we saw each other, he wanted to kill me. Well, now he wishes to make you an offer. The kind one can't refuse. I didn't, though I could have. Must have been a damn good offer then. Not many things you'd give up your freedom for, and even fewer people. The sooner we set off, the sooner you'll find out. What about you? I'm going in the opposite direction. I somehow doubt the Emperor's invitation mentioned me. Besides, I've got things to do at Kaer remember? Yeah, I remember. Thanks for your help, Vesemir. See you soon. How's your horse? Swift? Can't complain. Why do you ask? I'd like to be back behind some thick city walls as soon as possible. Just the beginning, but then... But then... Uh -huh. tomorrow, all right? After the audience. This bard's tale begins near White Orchard, with my dear friend Geralt of Rivia seeking his lover of yore, the sorceress Yennefer. She'd eluded him for years, but now seemed just a few steps ahead. After many trials and tribulations, Geralt finally learned that Yen was in nearby Vizima.
Oh, holy crap. More movie time. I was small too if I was going to watch by three women. Hmm. It must suffice. Think of your cares if I'm clean. The gentleman will refer to his Imperial Majesty by his full title or not at all. The gentleman will be seated on the bergère. The what now? In that chair. Catherine, please shave the gentleman's sideburns to half an inch. Not the beard. Don't touch the beard, man. What's wrong with my beard? I always thought it added to my dignity. It does. Yet it also detracts from your elegance. In Nilfgaard, we consider beards hard on the eyes. Especially beards infested with lice. I've been on the road a while. Fine. Do your thing. Sacrilege. Tilt your head back, please. And sit still. And prepare to answer some questions. General, I, I am not certain this is the appropriate time. I can't think of a better time. Men turn honest when they feel a blade at their throat. Movran Voris, commander of the Alba Division. Before they take you in to see the Emperor, Richard, there is some information I need you to verify. It's a formality. But one that must be seen to. Sure. Paperwork's gotta be in order. So, Geralt of Rivia. Place of birth unknown. Parents unknown. Age unknown. All insignificant details. Let us proceed to more recent events. The siege of La Valette Castle. The fate of the defending commander one Ariel. Yeah, I have no clue about this. I, I, I'm, I'm presuming this is from, like, the first two Witchers? We fought on opposing sides, true. Then we landed in the same dungeon. Arian escaped, set fire to the castle on his way out. So that is how the blade started. Our reports suggested the dragon was responsible. Moving on. You then found shelter in Charming Flotsam, and from there made your way to Bergen. My question is how? Psh. I got out. I joined. Okay, I guess this one? I got out of Flotsam with Vernon Roach. I have no clue who that. I joined Irith. He helped me out. I left Flotsam with Yorvith, commander of a square tail unit. A slayer of monsters and a slayer of men. We forge interesting alliances. Something tells me my most interesting is yet to come. Go on, next question, before my beard grows back in. We shall shave you again at the price. Very well. The infamous summit at Loch Moon. You were there. And once again meddled in the affairs of the mighty. Okay, how to save Triss, so that sounded like rescue op. Helped Irvith with the spell that held Saskia. I have no clue on what the hell that is. Rescue up it is. The mighty had imprisoned Triss Marigold. I don't know I care about her, and I tend to 
rescue those I care about. And so you did, handing Radovid control of the Conclave and Council of Mages in the process. Nilfgaard recently started a war, unprovoked. So do us both a favor and stop moralizing. The gentleman must sit still. I'm almost done. I'm afraid I might find that difficult. Because, from what I know, shortly afterwards you watched a defective megascope blow your friend Sheila de Tassel. Okay. I don't know if that. Okay, so it's a friend. So, so they escaped. Got what was coming to her. I guess escaped. I watched her get in the megascope, but ultimately freed her from the trap your man Netho of Gullet had set. Write that down. I want to be sure the paperwork's in order now. Well, national interest calls on one to forge difficult alliances. Alliances with witches. Oh. That lion's still alive? What happened to Letho? The alliance is dead, so yeah, I kill Letho. Who the fuck is Letho? So I had an alliance with the Witcher? shift in national interest that might have caused that? I don't know where he is. Wouldn't tell you if I did anyway. Blade or no blade to my throat. I believe that is all. Your signature, please, affirming you stated the whole truth and nothing but the truth on pain of imprisonment or death, etc. Here and here. With these formalities seen to, I would ask the general to leave the room. We shall be choosing the gentleman's attire. An important matter? But one that does not require the general's assistance. Shame. I might have given you some advice. So long, Garrett. Good luck with your audience. Feels more like I'm being ready for a wedding. Is that so? I would have prepared the gentleman a frock, a tailcoat, or possibly a dinner jacket. In point of fact, the gentleman will choose from these garments. Where are my clothes? Where they should have gone long ago, with the laundress. They will be returned to you after the audience, clean and starched. The gentleman will tell me once he has chosen an outfit. Well, it was kind of lost to my but I guess it had to be because I guess it covered parts from the previous Witcher, so it impacts this story as well. So I'm wondering though if if you played the first two Witchers and the story carries over, do you actually need to go through that as well? Because I haven't played the previous Witchers, so I don't know the story. That's why I'm just guessing at all that stuff. Pretty much, I'm going for. Maybe the best type ending uh, that's more open? Okay, so is there a difference between these? The two on the ends look almost the same. Are you trying to tell me like to go for the middle one? Eh. Can I just go like this in the towel? That would be interesting. Uh, 
elegant. Okay, ooh. Are you getting mad if I loot stuff? Wait, oh, hold on. I had the option. All right. Oh, I can get them all. That's interesting. You know what? Let's get them all. Why not? No wish pranking. No wish prankings. Scrub the greasings from a dog's ears, soak into cotton twine, place in a new lamp of greenish hue, and set said lamp betwixt an eager crowd. For sooth shall they swear that a dog's head they behold, and this shall be no sorcery, but good be, but good be tidings. For the prince of Enderol's nuptials, a paltry gnome, armed with a miniature cutlass, beheaded himself in a pie. When guests partook of a Priestly banquet, and then jumped out of the basil bread gnome, giving a terrible fright at all at first, then causing much merriment once the jest was figured. A cannot cynocephalus or dog head in our tongue, a beast that is in waste of a Zangbar dwells, has the corpses of a man but the head of a dog. The prince of El Elander did receive such a specimen from those far off lands. The dog head lets stream its urine with the tolling of every hour, both day and night, and this is why the Zangabarians engrave his likeness on the timepieces and compasses. Okay, weird. A sword for witches. Who are the hunters, you ask? Folk like you and me, I reply, the decent kind, haters of lies, doers of good. The kind who live according to the God's laws and nature's laws, too. Those disgusted by the machinations, machinations of witches, magickers, and non-humans. All that separates us from common folk is that we have the courage to take up arms to defend our lands from evil, to slice out the gangrene that eats us from within. We haven't a leader. We haven't forced her land. Through God's fearing, Radovid supports us with his gold at times. We've not sworn him nor any other rule or any oath. We serve only the eternal fire and we listen only to our own conscience. Who can join us? Any who is right of soul and sound of body. You can find us in every larger city in the north. We will give you Board, lodging, and a weapon. We will explain how to spot the telltale signs of evil. Birthmarks in strange and arcane shapes. Smooth skin on a matron aged more than 30 springs. And black cats kept in the yard, to name but a few. We will show you how to defend yourself from witchcraft. How to tame and snuff out magic elements with demeritium. We will instruct you how to squeeze the sinner's darkest secrets out of them with the hot iron. And how to grant them cleansing death with the help of sacred fire. Okay. Let's go over here. Speak. Be so kind and do not destroy. Ooh. Mug, alright, yeah, that's, that's something that I definitely need. The Wonders of Zeracania. During my many travels, I have seen countless extraordinary places, the medieval wilds of Brokilon, with trees so high their tips disappear in the clouds, dwarven chambers carved with the guts of the Maka Mahakam Mountains. With walls plated in pure gold, the ice palace of Pont Vanis adorned with stained frost wind windows, 
Yet none of these made such an impression on me as did the rightly famed Zeracania. Yet while I was tra traversing the Fury Mountains, I feared disappointment weighed me on their side. I heard many a fantastic tale about Zeracania, about its trackless sands, burnt white by the sun, its golden scaled dragons, weaving their nests amidst the dunes, its hunched backed horses able to survive weeks without even a swallow of water, yet none seemed to me to me at all plausible. I was sure all these sensations were but the figments of some bar's overactive imagination. I know this will be hard for you to believe, dear reader, as it once was for me, but all of the unbelievable tales are true. Not only that, during my many months of travel, I came across wonders far surpassing those any prior tra travelogues mentioned. I saw temples dedicated to the worship of dragons. I heard their voice, almost human but reverberating with a thousand echoes. I met warrior maids clad in leopard skins, tattooed from the head to foot, and giving no ground to witchers in mastery of the blade. I saw mages who channel power from fire. I saw seemingly harmless flies whose solitary bite would make a man fall into a deep slumber, never to awake save to die. In short, Zerukanya is a land where the fantastic is normal. All the impossible occurs daily. Okay, cool. Flowers, really? A shame I have no time. No one's talking to you, buddy. The opposition in Nifgard. While Nifgard's emperor wields absolute power, harshly crushing the slightest sign of disobedience, opposing forces continue to exist within the empire. By this, I do not mean the disgruntled leaders of conquered provinces, but the magnates within the city of a thousand towers who are unhappy with the current leadership. This conflict between the emperor and the noble houses of Nifgard, the capital dates back many years. All the princes of the blood and magnates expected their ruler to wed one of their daughters and sire and heir with one of their own. The emperor, however, had other plans. This proved a slap in the face for all the great families from which he refused to take a bride. The Nifgard opposition patiently waits for the emperor to slip up, for some event to occur which will weaken his authority, be it an economic crisis or a defeat in battle. A secret conspiracy lies ready to seize such a moment to incite the disaffected, assassinate the emperor, and carry out a coup d'etat culminating with one of their own number ascending to the throne. For obvious reasons, only a limited few know of this conspiracy, but any shrewd observer of Nifgardian politics can read the signs of its workings. So long as men are men and the world is as it is, certain dynamics will forever remain the same, and the discontented will always form subversive societies with their secret signs and hidden agendas. Hmm. Okay then. What's this? Loot. Are you saying like I'm some kind of like unbelievable thing, like a like a fairy or a unicorn? Even though I'm not a fairy. Thank goodness. I know some people are fairies, and whatever. That's their business. Okay. I think I looted everything. Let's go ahead and start wearing stuff. Are these all the same? Looks like. Looks the same, okay. And I think I'm done with that. Get dressed and talk to the Chamberlain. Chamberlain. 
they say clothes do not make the man. Does the outfit satisfy the gentleman? A studded doublet and a sword on my back, that's what would satisfy me. A tough when in Nilfgaard. Yes. It's a saying. So what now? Powder my nose. No need. The gentleman's complexion is light enough. The gentleman is to stand before the ruler of the north and south. I must confirm that he knows how to bow. Watch. Leg extended, hand flat, head down, chin to chest. The gentleman will rehearse. What the hell? Right leg forward. <sighs> ah. fluidity and grace, but we've learned to expect less of Northlings. Come with me. Oh, what a dick. The gentleman will address the Emperor only when asked to, and using the appropriate type. Your arch magnificence. <laughs> I see the gentleman is in the mood for jests. I fear the Emperor might not share his disposition. Your Majesty will suffice. Spoken loudly, clearly, and with respect. Nah. Thank God we don't have kings anymore. Remain Kersher. It's Dicewind Adam in Khan at Morvold. Okay. I'm not even having any swords on my back. What the heck are you talking about? In Grimmy at Art Kerzer. Dyfen Aden in Khan at Narvut. Emir Bar Emreis. Defiance. Wait, I didn't want a bow. Your Imperial Majesty. Arer et do orde. Valian nomen vatgem favor. So if I don't choose, it actually chooses for me? The hell is this? Yeah, I don't. Didn't want to disappoint the Chamberlain. We're friends. I didn't want to bow. Ugh. Take it you didn't summon me to reminisce about the good old days. So, silence. My daughter, Sevilla. She's returned. And she's in danger. The wild hunt pursues her. You will find her and bring her to me. Are you sure? Siri left. Went far, far away. Do you believe I drag you here in the middle of a war to discuss a rumor? I think anyone can be wrong, even an emperor. I had forgotten how insolent you can be. I haven't the time to convince you, nor the desire, in fact. Yanifu will do that. After the audience. How many men in your army? 20,000? 30? So why me? You know why. Because she trusts you. She trusts me, yes. So tell me why you're looking for her. Doubt it's about making up for all those lost years. 
for reasons of state, as always. Enough of this banter. You would agree regardless, if for no other reason than because I shall pay you more than you customarily receive for a contract. Considerably more. Save your generosity for those whose homes your armies have raised. I'll do it for Siri, not for your gold. Your motives do not interest me, only results. Yennefer will tell you the rest. This audience is finished. Meredith! Take him to the sorceress. I didn't want to bow. Well, now I know. Follow me, if the gentleman pleases. Please keep close. There are many honorable guests in the palace whom the gentleman... His guests. ...need not bother. Mean to me a day So I guess for this game, I had to choose where it's going to choose for me. Now, uh, I guess it reminded me of that. of the Tanner's Guild? As if it makes a damn difference. I demand... Calm down. The Emperor demands silence. Those who disturb face harsh punishment, no matter their birth. Greetings. Yo. A Witcher. Oh, that's just perfect. What the hell are you bitching about? Hail Kerza. Nah. Yes. The scene has got a lot of us. Yeah. I mean, that sleep in air, in it. Spoon is a sour on me, fires. This is an F site. A fincer name Macca. Name Kaputel and M. Aha. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look, this is for Akshwa as far as. Ted the Tagain and Kalant Nays of Boloy Sar. F to Sar. Mind if I interrupt? Why not join in instead? We're discussing neutrality. How difficult it is to preserve. Still worth trying. Because? Because there are few causes worth serving, even fewer men. Enough about that. Mind if we change the subject? So, talk to the Emperor. Hmm. Why did he summon you? So not even you know. No. But I wager it's an ordinary witch's contract. Mm-hmm. Some weirbubs. See ya. Soon, mind you. Okay. But still. I didn't want to bow. Uh, that kind of irritates me. Hmm. 
room. Don't tell me what to do, game. Good grief, get out of your fat ass if you want to clean it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get there. Relax, buddy. Relax. See, he understands, he does work, and I can't talk to him. Stop mumbling, you look like an idiot. Geralt, that tunic, you look positively smashing. Ugh, dying to take it off. I'd consider that a proposition under different circumstances. One I might even take you up on. But we've matters to attend to. Now do you understand why I'm at Amir's court? Mm -hmm. It seems we're in the same boat now. Siri, she's really back? No chance he's mistaken? Look, that's more or less what she looks like now. Or so our agents claim. Our little witch is grown into a young lady. So they're our agents now? My, my. You've clearly settled in quick. Geralt, don't twist my words. I know who Amir is. He started this war and its bloodshed. He had my friends killed. But I haven't any other choice. So please, let's not belabor the pros and cons and instead focus on finding Siri. Alright? Right. Amir said the wild hunts after her. I'd find that hard to believe, before what happened yesterday. How did they track us down? Because of me. You see, I've spent months searching for Siri, using locating spells, haruspicy, geomancy, anything, really. I knew the Wild Hunt might sense it, perhaps even find me, but I thought I'd trick them. Well, guess you were wrong. Hmm. I've sensed them on my trail, hunting me for some time. If not for you and Amir's soldiers, they'd have gotten what they were after. I can't risk another encounter like that. It's time to put away the magic, turn to more traditional methods. To the best tracker I know. You must find her, Geralt. Before the Wild Hunt does. The Wild Hunt? What could it want from Ciri? I've no clue, Geralt. Might have written them to ask, but I don't have their address. I know as much as you do. It must be about her blood. Her gift. As for what the hunt wishes to do with that gift, I... I prefer not to think about it, really. So where's Siri been seen, exactly? In two places. Velen and Novograd. The trail in Velen is most promising. You should make that your first stop. Ask for a merchant named Hendrik at the inn at the crossroads. One of the Emperor's agents. 
You should get in touch with me. That's it? No passwords? Secret handshakes? None. Sorry to spoil your fun. Your boyhood fantasies about the crafts of the trade. All we have in Novigrad are unconformed reports, rumors. But there you will have the help of our mutual acquaintance. Triss Nerigold. Apparently she's got a cozy flat on the main square. Sure she'll be delighted to see me. What about you? What will you do? I shall sail for Skellige. There was a magic explosion there recently, blew half a forest down. I believe this had something to do with Siri. I'll be in care trolled. Join me there once you've learned something. Before we go, why didn't you contact me? Didn't need me? Didn't even want to see me? I didn't want to spoil things. I'd heard you and Triss made a great couple. Damn, I'd lost my memory. Really? That's your excuse? Let's drop it, alright? It's not what you think, or it helped me understand how much I love you. I don't wish to hear it, any of it. This means we need to split up again. Not my preference, but I understand. The clock's ticking. It is indeed. So why don't I teleport you to Velen, get you there at once? Not gonna happen. I'll go on horseback, as soon as I can get changed. Have it your way? Oh, and you really look quite dashing in black velvet. Think so? Maybe I can have some of my armor lined with it. <laughs> Good luck, Yen. Same to you. And if you wish to learn what's happened in the world while you and Vesemir roam the wilderness, talk to Ambassador Varatra. That's him over there. And Geralt, I know it's wartime, but try not to be a hero, all right? Just check those leads and come back to me in one piece. I shall be waiting. Okay then. So there's portals in this game, okay. So let's see here. There is characters. A lot of characters. Good grief. Okay. Cirilla, Fionn, Ellen, Renan. What can I possibly say about her? That we call her Siri for short, that she was born in 1251, that she has ashen hair and a scar on her cheek. All true, and that's the Cirilla I know best. The one I first laid eyes upon those many years ago. The one who seemed thoroughly, well, not ordinary, but certainly not as extraordinary as she is, she, as she in fact is. For Cyrilla is also a highly skilled witcher, heiress to several thrones, the last bearer of the Elder Blood, a powerful source endowed with exceptional magic talent and the Lady of Time and Space. Her hair and her hair color and date of birth seem rather incidental now, don't they? I could tell you that she is Geralt's adopted daughter, but that would be a gross simplification. Siri is much more. She is his destiny, his unexpected child, someone bound to the Witcher by fate most inextricably tangled fetters. Following age-old Witcher tradition, Geralt took Siri to Kier Morden, where she came into his care. There, he and Vesemir taught her in the ways of the professional monster slayer. It was then that her magic talents were first revealed, and they discovered she was a source. Ciri's gift proved a curse as well, because of it, she would be, she would one day have to hide from the entire world, even Geralt. Ciri's biography contained one more great secret. Her natural father was none other than the Emperor of Nifgard, Emir von Emrys, 
His words confirmed the fear swirling in Geralt's mind. Ciri had returned and was in mortal danger, for the unrelenting Wild Hunt was on her trail. Yet for a minute clear why the Wild Hunt wanted Ciri. Aridin wanted the power latent in her elder blood. She also let Geralt know that Ciri had been seen in war ravaged felon villain, as well as Novigrad, the largest city in the world. Dandelion. Yeah. I would wager anyone that you, dear reader, are a person of culture and taste, and therefore already familiar with me, Dandelion, and the role I am to play in the following tale. Nevertheless, allow me to sketch a few lines by way of self-portrait for the sake of thoroughness, and in the event you have spent much of the last half century in some dark corner where the light of my star has yet to reach. Whew. Born in 1229, a talented poet and troubadour, a graduate of Oxenford Academy, a frequent performer in royal courts, an unequal lover appreciated, and in some cases adored by ladies worldwide, a skilled negotiator and a stirring orator, such an is the image of the bard Dandelion as painted by his friends and promoters. This image is, of course, somewhat overbright in its coloring. I personally prefer to think of myself as a dedicated artist and the thrall to his muse, one whose work has benefited immeasurably from the fact that I was, am, and forever will remain a close friend and steadfast companion to the Witcher Geralt. It is his fate I chronicle in this present work and his story which I shall sing till the end of my days. Okay, so pretty much all the stories and everything is kind of like seen through his eyes or he, through his storytelling, pretty much. So he's like the narrator. Emmer of our Emrys. Few names in the continent history arouse as much terror and respect as that of Emmer of our Emrys. Dithwan Edin Yun Karp, a Morvud, the white flame dancing on the graves of his foes. Emperor of Novograd, Lord of Metena. Ebbing and Gamera, sovereign of ne Nazir and Vicovera, he was ruler of the half. He was ruler of half of the civilized world and aspiring conqueror of the other half. He was a personage whose deeds and decisions shaped the face of the whole kingdom and populations. What then could he possibly want of a simple witcher? The emperor clearly and succinctly laid out what he wanted: his daughter and girl's ward, Cirilla was in great danger, for the wall hunt was on her trail. Geralt, a superb tracker linked to Emmer's daughter by the Iron Bounds of Destiny, stood a better chance of finding her than anyone else in the world. Eskil? All witchers have a great deal in common, but Eskil and Geralt... Eskil? Eskil? The similarities are particularly striking. They first met as two boys of the same age, swinging wooden swords at Kier Morden. They then went through an ordeal together, the first round of selections, the murderous changes, the trial of the grasses, and the training on the gauntlet, the witcher's daunting obstacle course. They also received hidings together for more than one act of childish delinquency. When they became adults, they walked the path separately, but still reconvened at Kier Morton and nearly every winter to wait out the cold, drink to their successes, and remember fallen comrades. Though Eskil never gained Geralt's renown, he equaled the White Wolf in experience and carried out his contracts with care and efficiency. Death had almost taken him many times during his hunts, yet it is ironic, an ironic twist. The hideous scar on his face came not from Monster's Claw, but from the blade of a Deidre Edemir, his highly unpredictable, ex unexpected child. Okay. Guilt to Rivia. Oh, good grief. Yeah. Many cannot fathom the friendship Geralt of Rivia and I, Dandelion, have shared all these years. When we first began breaking bread together, his spiteful tongue said he'd be better off cutting my throat and dumping my body in a hollow tree before I provoked someone else into doing the same to us both. Those individuals spoke out of pure jealousy, for Geralt was my dearest friend, a fact which he gave ample evidence of on numerous occasions. I will say a great deal about that the world famous monster hunter, the man known as Elder Speech as Grimblade, or in our younger yet no less noble tongue as the White Wolf. Ah, uh, Grimblade, okay. 
But Geralt of Ruby is a truly exceptional individual. A brief encounter might tempt one to label him a mere swinger of the swords, a simple monster catcher, a rough and tumble practitioner of a dirty trade. But peer closer and you will soon discover he is a man of unplumbed depths, unique views, and a vast world-spanning experience. On the surface, he is introverted, tight-lipped, one might even say gruff, but individual lies an overflowing sea of goodwill, good humor, and an honest readiness to help his friends. Be it with a bit of sound evidence or the masterful application of his blade. Setting aside comes some false modesty, I can see that I know his story better than any man alive. I was with him through hard times and good, help, helping with wise advice, warm words, and razor wit. As a result, I am a vital part of his story, both in its earlier and present portions. It is thus my duty to continue my chronicle and, for the benefit of future generations, put in the writing, put in writing the next chapter of his deeds and exploits. Hendrick. Considering this, the way spy corps of all stripes tend to function, Hendrick was undoubtedly not this man's real name. Nevertheless, that was the only appellation the Witcher knew for his Imperial Majesty's nose to the ground and villain. After asking around, Geralt learned a Hendrick lived in the village of Heatherton. Lambert. The youngest of the Witchers of Kerr Morden, and perhaps the last ever trained within its walls by the start of our tale, Lambert had proven his chops many times over. Having hunted down many beasts and traversed nearly all the continent's realms several times over. Yet, he had only also developed a reputation for arrogance and sadistic humor, and his gruff at times ex excessively blunt manner could irritate even his fellow witchers of the school of the wolf. However, his vices, it went without saying, that Lambert would brave the fires of any hell for his companions. Morvan Vorus Morvan Vorus, commander of the Abba Division, an officer of the, mighty, of the highest rank and a pure-blooded aristocrat, one who could pride himself, call himself a Nifgardian, a designation reserved only for the native-born inhabitants of the Empire's capital and its immediate surroundings. At the time of the first meeting, Geralt had no idea what an important person had been assigned to the task, asking him a few routine questions. Knowing the Witcher, however, knowledge of Morvan's rank and status would not have made much of a difference. Tris Marigold I always considered it a point of particular pride to count Tris Marigold of Maribor among my closest and dearest friends. This exceptionally talented sorceress was a shining star of her profession. The former mage advisor to King Fulcest and a famous hero of the Battle of Soda known as the 14th of the Hill. Yet in no way did she resemble her often unbearably haughty sisters in magic. Her deaf mind, warm smile, and considerable personal charm had always won her even the hardest of hearts. Through my personal relations with Tris, never ventured through the fraternal, Gerald Revere at one point found her a little irresistible. From then on, the two shared feelings that ran far deeper than a superficial and fleeting fancy. Yennefer told Gil that Tris had recently taken up residence in the free city of Novograd. Novograd. Good grief. I, I gotta drink some water after all that. Jeez. Well, at least I know some who some of the characters are now. It's kind of nice that they did that. There's more characters also. <laughs> why? Why? Why are you adding more game? Vesemir. Vesemir is the oldest living member of the Wolf School and the most likely the oldest Witcher of any school on the continent. About as long in, in years as the ruins of Kirmordim themselves, and through eternally complaining about his creaky bones, this master of the Witcher trade gave no thought to a well-deserved retirement. Gray but still spry, he continued to ply the monster hunting trade into his golden years, effectively too, as he's seen more beasts than all of the students put together. 
A harsh and demanding instructor in Geralt's youth, over the years he had become something of an adopted father and mentor to other witches, witchers, always ready to help with sage advice and steady hands. In the spring of 1272, when our story begins, Vesemir had joined Geralt on a search for Yennefer, trekking with him through war-torn Temeria. Yennefer of Fingerberg. The witcher first met the raven-haired sources in a good 20 years back. Their friendship and their feelings between them were born of a common adventure involving a genie and a wish granted to Geralt that intertwined their fates inextricably. In the time since then, their relationship had, however, been quite stormy, rich in ups and downs, crises and breakups. Geralt and Yennefer love provides irrefutable proof of the thesis that opposites attract. A few years ago, Geralt and Yennefer had, after a long separation full of adventures for both of them, gone back together again. Their moment of repose had, was interrupted by the wild hunt, which took Yennefer captive. The witcher set out at once to save her, but lost his memory while doing so. When he finally recovered it, he immediately set off once more on his quest to find his beloved sorceress. The circumstances of Geralt's initial reunion with Yennefer after two years were quite different than he had imagined. The sorceress was not only safe and sound, but had even secured the aid of an unexpected and mighty ally, the Nefgardian Empire. Is that all? I think that'd be all. Okay, thank God. Alright, first things first, let's loot. Don't worry, Jennifer. It's for your good cause. Ooh. I remember that. I almost had to buy that too, I think. Yeah, see? Okay, so I guess there you can get the Potions, decoctions, whatever, from different sources. It doesn't have to be the same source, supposedly. That's my understanding, anyways. But, I have to choose the dialogue. Didn't I read that already? Yeah, I read that already. I'm not going to read it again. The Last Wish. Human life requires three things for its sustenance, food, drink, and gossip. It is thus no wonder that no matter where I travel, be it icebound province or evergreen tosient, everyone asks me about the passions that bind Geralt and the sorceress, Jennifer of Fenrirberg. As a man both cautious and discreet, I refuse to betray their secrets, with one important exception. The history of the first encounter is so extraordinary, so romantic and moving, that would be a veritable crime to hide its light beneath a bushel basket. Indeed, had I not witnessed these events in person, I would never believe there is room in our grim and dark world for such fantastic marvels. It all began when Gerald and I were feeling a bit peckish and, unburdened by heavy coin pouches, decided to fish our supper out of the lake. No bites were to be had, but we did not leave empty-handed. My hook snagged quite a lovely little pot. Oblivious to my friend's warnings, I opened it, and in doing so, freed a powerful Jin. Without giving it much thought, I set about proclaiming my wishes. Before I could get to three, however, the Jin irritated. I see now in hindsight that being issued demands so soon after waking began to throttle me. Geralt was able to drive him off, but I was left in a sorry state. I acted. The Witcher told me later as though under the influence of some curse. Clearly, the help of an expert in the magic arcana would be needed. It was our good fortune that Yennefer of Vernonburg happened to be staying in a nearby village. Geralt went to her to ask that she heal his best friend, who happened to also be the brightest star in the North North's poetic firmament. Yennefer, however, was more interested in the jinn, which she wanted to trap into a magic servitude than in its victim. And yet should be it should be said that should be said 
played the Witcher like a well-strung mandolin. But rather than grow angry and being used in such a calculating manner, he fell white head over muddy boots in love with her. What happened? Well, I won't go into detail. Suffice to say that Yennefer's plans hardly delighted the gym, and without his cooperation, she proved unable to tame it. The sources would surely have met a tragic end and taken all of Reed along with her had Gell not rushed to rescue her. For once, he did not need to draw either of his blades to send the gym packing. He had but to pronounce the third and final wish. He could have asked for anything, wealth, power, fame, but instead he asked the djinn to bind his fate to that of the arrogant yet intrigued sorceress from, from Vernonburg. Julian Alfred Pachtres, Biscuit of Lindenburg, born 1232, award-winning poet, playwright, and troubadour, frequent performer of the courts of Nerder, Frismer, Frenslaz, and many other nobles and notables, alumnus of Oxenford Academy. Good grief. There's a lot of lore in this game. Which I guess is a good thing too, because you can get so engrossed into it, but man. The collective verse of Gonzalo de Versu? Love. To love is to build a house of cards or play a game of chess. But one wrong word or ill thought move, and you must start it all afresh. Tide. Whenever I watch the tide recede, cold coils of fear grip around my heart. Will the sea sneak back, calm and sure, in the dark of night as they have before? Or will they stay on distant shores, leaving crushed shells and wash up dreams as memory of surfs of lore? Whatever, man. What's that on the ground? Why can't I pick it up? Don't care anymore. I don't think I need the the bread knife there. I think I got that already. The wild hunt. From farmers and herdsmen, milkmaids to midwives, all the common folk of the continent whisper, sharing tales of a wrathy pr procession pounding across the sky. The wild hunt, they call it. Winds and gales, storms and blizzards arise when it's sighted, and all grows cold, though the sun shone bright moments ashore. Some remember only the cold from the shock of the counter and claim the riders come always in winter. But nay, this is not so. The hunt brings its own ice. Death and war gallop on its wake, or so the superstition goes. Yet evil enough is the hunt itself. It takes folks captive, youths oft most often in the prime of their wilding years, with ten to twenty summers behind them. The hunt rushes in and they disappear, only to return long years later with no memory of what happened in the time between. Hmm. Interesting. Royal Lineages of the North. Good grief. Cyrilla Fiona Ellen Rionon, born Rionon, Rionon, born in 1251, heirs to the throne of Sintra, Princess of Brugge and Duchess of Soden, the heirs of blah, blah, blah. A shipwreck occurred during a journey from Sintra to Skilliga, which took the lives of the Urchin and Paveda. Cyrilla's further upbringing was then entrusted to her grandmother. In 1260, afraid of the looming Nifgardian threat, Queen Calanth sent Cyrilla to the court of King Everald, where the heiress of Sintra was to marry the heir to the throne of Verdun, Prince Kristen, Kirsten. Though allying with Verdun and gaining the aid of the realm's army was at the time Calanth's top priority, no marriage ever occurred, and Cyrilla returned to her grandmother's court. In 1262, during the so-called Sintra Massacre, Cyrilla went missing. Letter to Yennefer. Yennefer, my friend, thank you for the letter. Forgive me for not answering your earlier your earlier attempt to reach me via megascope. I'm trying to limit my my magic communication to the absolute minimum. 
One never knows who's listening, don't you agree? I am delighted you have found a position at a gracious emperor's court and wish you the best of luck in search for his daughter. It is good to know that Emmer's intentions for her have become more, how I shall put it, mundane. Perhaps it's in these circumstances an agreement regarding the lodge will prove possible after all. In response to your first question, I can stake beyond all doubt that Siri has not appeared anywhere south of Uruga. Believe me, I could recognize her magic signature in my sleep. I have not had any contact with Triss for a long time. I only know that things in Umagrad have taken an ill turn. She mentioned something earlier about fleeing to Kovir, but I am afraid that in the current political climate that amounts to an impossible daydream. I hope I will soon be able to join you in Vizimir. First, however, I must take care of some unfortunate yet urgent matters in Bureaucrater. With my fondest regards, Fringillo Vigo. Can I look at the... Can I, can I, can I look at it? There we go. Oh, that's nice. Scars healed nicely. Huh. So she has a scar. She who knows good grief. Folks say that they were four at first. The mother, she who knows, the lady of the wood, came her from a faraway land, and since she suffered terribly from loneliness, she made three daughters out of dirt and water. A long, long time ago, the mother was sole ruler of all villain. Her daughters brought her the people's request and served her and served as her voice. Each spring, sacrifices of grain, animals, and men were made to the Lady of the Wood on her special night. Yet, as the years passed, the Lady of the Wood slipped deeper and deeper into madness. Her madness eventually spread over the land. Men took to abandoning their homes and setting out into the bog, where they became food for beasts. Before long, Velen was drowning in blood. The daughters saw the land nearing destruction and took it upon themselves to save it. When spring came once more, and with the night of sacrifices, they killed their mother and buried her in the bog. Her blood wa watered the, s the oak atop Ard Serban, and from then on the tree grew wholesome and hearty fruit for the people. As for the lady's immortal soul, it refused to leave its beloved land, and so the sisters imprisoned it. To this day, it lies trapped beneath the whispering hillock where it thrashes into a powerless rage. Huh. Interesting. suggest that I ask you about current events, the war and so on. Of course. The Emperor's servants should keep no secrets from each other. If you will, let us approach the map. How's the war going? from the fact that Nilfgaard's triumph is imminent. I assume this to be a private conversation. We've no witnesses, so let's dispense with the propaganda, even that shrouded in irony. Our offensive was going splendidly until winter came. Edam was in such disarray that we encountered no resistance. We had reached the Plontar before the first snows. Only a weakened Kedwin remained, and Radovid's Redania, which had ignored the rest of the North's pleas for help. We thought they'd sue for peace, perhaps even submit to vassalization. We waited for spring, certain of victory. Radovid, submit? Yes, the vain hope I grew. Radovid sent no peace envoy, 
nor did he advance on our positions. Instead, he trudged over the snow-bound Kestrel Mountains and attacked Kedwin, his ally. This attack took the Kedweni by surprise. They were still mourning the loss of their king. Rudderless and dejected, they laid down their arms after a few lost skirmishes and joined Radovid. And so by spring, instead of two weak enemies, we had only one powerful one. Kavir values its neutrality, enough not to lend its armies, or more importantly, even its coin to either side. Returning to the war, this spring there was a massive battle in the marshes of Velen. Massive, yet indecisive. Both sides suffered enormous losses, unprecedented even. Radovid has retreated across the Pontar. He's safe for now, until reinforcements arrive from the south. Then, Emperor Amir of our enemies will deal with him once and for all. Couldn't you just go home? Save everyone a lot of marching, not to mention a few human lives. I'm afraid the stakes are too high to fold now. We can only go all in. Hmm. How do things look in Velen? As bad as ever. Perhaps worse. This land never flowed with milk and honey, and now it flows with blood. Armies have swept through it several times, trampling fields, looting granaries, burning villages. Famine grips the populace. Mm -hmm. So how's ruling that earthly paradise going for you? Not well, to be honest. Our forces are spread thin as it is, and Velen is chiefly swampy forests that are difficult to control. We've had several patrols never return to their camps. Thus, we've temporarily delegated authority in this region to a certain Nordling, a former low-ranking officer in the Temerian army, one Philip Strenger, better known by his nom de guerre, the Bloody Baron. I advise you well. Avoid him. Any news from Novigrad? Is the free city still free? Yes, although everyone knows this won't last. Radovid is in Oxenford, and the Emperor is here in Vizima, at Novigrad's doorstep, both. And both require coin and ships, and Novigrad can provide these. Which is why the mood in the city is rather, well, on edge. Meaning? How do men deal with fear? They seek reassurance and scapegoats. The Church of the Eternal Fire understands this perfectly, and so it promises to improve the lives of its flock by pointing out the guilty. Who started the war? Who profits from it? Why, it's obvious. Mages, elves, dwarves, in a word, any and all deviants. I've been stationed in Novigrad for 13 years. First as a consul, then as ambassador. I've seen a great deal. Cruelty, cynicism, greed, but what is happening there now concerns me greatly. What's new in Skellige? Nothing. The islanders pride themselves on that, don't they? Doing everything according to tradition, as their forefathers did. And like their forefathers, they quarrel with each other, pillage, occasionally attack our transports. It is cumbersome but nothing more. Skellige has always been a footnote to history, and so it shall remain. Sound awfully confident. What if King Bran manages to unite the Jarls? Lead all the clans against your fleet. King Bran is a feeble old man. From what I know, he barely remembers the names of his own vassals. Uniting all might prove difficult. Thanks for your help. Think nothing of it. May the great sun light your path. Alright. Got some intel there. Now. Thanks for the info. Where did I come in from? 
I'm all turned around. Oh, we came back in here. It's interesting. More books. No more. No! Son of a gun! Son of a gun! Crows of the North. No one can claim that they have traveled the North from who has not been to Novigrad. If I w were forced to list what well, during my many meanderings has made the greatest impression on me, it would be precisely this great free city. A metropolis worthy of the empire, its only flaw is that the civilization Nifgard carries within her has not been yet enlightened it has not yet enlightened it. Uh, this is why horrors of reactionary cultures of the eternal far dwell in the midst of its excellent buildings and superb commercial infrastructure. One feels as though superstition is how the local hierarch and his stomach guard cement their power over the city dwellers. And m many they are to control for the city count no less than the 30,000 of inhabitants. We're all, while strolling through this fabulous port surrounded by marvels of architect, it's hard to imagine that centuries ago Novigrad was a mere minor Alpen townstead. Yet the city fell into the hands of Nordlings. As problems grew exponentially, for it, as is well known, the people of the north can do many great things, yet peaceful and orderly cohabitation is not one of them. And so Novigrad first belonged to Redinia, and then fell under Temerian rule, until finally, after endless compromises and bargains, it at last became a free city. But is the city truly free? I dared to doubt it. Redanian influence makes itself felt too strongly on every street corner, and the fact that the city is located within Novigrad's territory speaks for itself. While wandering the city streets, I came across the four great mills, eight banks, and nearly 19 pawn shops. There are also a great many houses of simple pleasures, such as taverns and brothels, and Novigrad's commitment to matters of faith and borne witness to by the fact that the city contains no less than, I kid you not, 19 temples to the eternal fire. What more can be said? I think Novigrad has all the makings of the capital of the world, and perhaps that is what it will become, what will one day become. First, however, someone needs to bring order to within her walls. What shall become of Temeria? Temeria, a land of milk and honey, once flowed, and what did she wrong the gods that they would treat her so cruelly? The pearl of the north to some, she proved a galloping range of Nifgardian cavalry to others. As the country had survived two precious wars against the empire, it was here that the war's bloodiest spells were fought. It was Temeria where the most <coughs> bestial deeds were wrought. It was Temerian civilians who bore the full brunt of the war's horrors. And bear them we did, bravely and steadfastly, until the demise of our great protector, King Foltest. Then Providence turned his fickle face from Temeria. Murdered from most treacher treacherously, Foltest failed to save Temeria, a worthy successor. Failed to leave Temeria, a worthy successor. And so all manner of her curse soon fell upon her, tearing her apart like so much carry-on. She had no more allies then. None remembered that she had once been the armor protecting the north from the designs of the Mad Dancer, he who had gravestones of his foes pounded into a ballroom floor. A free and independent Temerio is no more. A dark faced sun looms over every looms over her every rampart. Yet we Temerians live on, and always will. As long as folks believe the usurper who took our beloved capital of Bizima to treat as this property will forever peer over his shoulder in fear. For in the shadows lurks not one dagger, but the power of the nation of daggers waiting to deal justice's blow. Oh my gosh. No more reading. I like to read, but not in the game. Oh, good God. I already read that. Thank you.
portrayal of the elder races. What is a non-human? The answer is simple. As the very name suggests, it is something which resembles and yet nevertheless is not a human. Though it walks in two legs, speaks a tongue similar to our own, and dresses in similar attire, it all the same has more in common with base beasts than noble man. Dwarves are like moles. They feel best underground and avoid direct sunlight. They like to live in filth, forever smudging themselves in mud and slime. They love everything that can be found within the earth, rocks, metal, minerals of all shapes and color. It is also said that they are kindred moles. They feed most rarely on worms, roaches, and other nightcrawlers. Half Halflings, for their part, are more reminiscent of gophers. Fat, lazy, and loud in that typical running away. Their minds are filled only with thoughts of food and drink, which they steal from other, nobler beasts and greedily squirrel away in their hovels. They are marked by a cruel craftiness. You could be dying of hunger, and they would not share a meal with you. You could be howling from poverty, and they would, could be swimming in gold, and yet they would still fleece you to the last crown. You could do nothing but good to them, and they would still stab a knife in your back. Elves, in turn, seem related to the birds of prey that dwell in far off Zerokinia. They care not for the color of feathers. They would most they care most for the color of feathers. They would most rarely spend all day staring at their reflections in the water and singing their own praises. They are so awash in self love that they no longer feel any desire toward members of the opposite sex of their own species. Their appearance unquestionably pleasant to the eye is highly misleading. For they are extraordinarily cruel, and any who judge them by looks alone, they first dupe and then kill in cold blood. The best proof of this, the so called Scotiotil, bandits that claim to fight for freedom, but in truth only long to kill humans. And these vile so called elder races are, to the great fortune, slowly dying out. Joy fills the heart of every right thinking man, and the thought of his great 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 grandchildren will never know them will never know them that in the day in the day dwarves halflings and elves will be mere fairy tale characteristics you used to scare young impressionable children man what is, what bigotry jeez okay i think i got everything we out How might I serve the gentleman? By returning my things. Citrus and cloves. The fragrance will keep the gentleman's robes fresh somewhat longer. Mm. Thanks, Bunches. The Emperor is not known for his patience. He wants his daughter back safe and sound, as soon as possible. Yeah, mention something of the sort. So long. All right. Whew. All right, first things first. Uh, you know what? I'll wait to put stuff on here after a bit. I'll save it first, and then I'll put my stuff on. All right, so I got sword, sword, that. So do I have everything back on? like it yep sweet oh hold on there's something here what is this
Ah, oh, Gwent, son of a monkey's uncle. Let's do this. Yeah, I don't care. Wouldn't mind a few rounds of cards. So maybe I should not Let's just start it. Just get it over with. Are you kidding me? What is this doing? All ranged. Ah, oh, son of a gun. Okay. So I thought it was close, but. Yeah, I don't care. Just get it done and over with. Really? You passed? So... I just need to put this there and I win it, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's do again.
what do you do exactly? Siege, okay. So I want to do What the hell? Where are these stupid carts come- I, I don't like this already. I hate this game. Sweet. Now, am I going to actually have enough? Ten. I think I'm screwed. You know what I could have done? I could have saved some cards. I fucked up there. I just so fucked up. That's stupid of me. I should have saved, saved some cards. You know what, now I just want to destroy you now. Because now I just remember how to play the game. Wouldn't mind a few rounds of cards. Get my money back at least. Don't care, just start the game. I can't believe I wasted all my cards like that. Oh, now that I remember how to play the game.
I'm good with that. Crap. If I don't win this one, I'm just going to move on. Really? Holy crap. Ah! What's that? Why not? Sweet. Okay, Gwent. Uh. The hell are they doing? Deserter from the spoiled camp. God preserve you. Okay. Say you not to be. So, travel to villain. Okay, or a palace uh, in Vizima. Why okay was what this well-to-do village is famous for its fruit orchards. His bows burst out in a white blossom come spring. Velen, the former Temerian province of Velen, has become a war ravaged no man's land. So just level five. I'm not even. Jeez. Okay. Well, that's where I'm going, I guess. Ah. Huh. Huge. Huge.
Guess we're going there. Geralt and Yennefer would be united, but something even more important happened in Vizima. Geralt learned that Cirilla, his one-time ward, had returned from afar. She was in danger. He was to find her at the Emperor's command and Yennefer's behest. Did I eat the yellow snow? Fell in northern Tamaria five days later. Go to the inn at the crossroads. Are those wolves? Go ahead and save this. And I'm going to take a quick break. i uh, going to refill my coffee. So I will be back in about two or three minutes. Be back in a bit.
And we are back. First things first, coffee. All right. So, let's see, what does the quest say? What quest do we have now? Oh my god, the secondary quests are all Gwent. Okay. The Nifgardian Connection. Garrett traveled to Velen in search of Ciri, an act that attested to the depths of, of his devotion. Only a man who has been to this land can know just how vile it is. At this time, it is commonly known as No Man's Land. Why? Well, the Emperor of Nivgard had not claimed it yet. Tamari was in disarray, and the Danians had already retreated north. No man had been left in charge, and he had been been proved a terrible ruler. Geralt needed to find Hendrik, an imperial agent who had been working on Ciri's case, and to collect from him what information he had managed to gather. I see. I see wolves. I see dogs. These things are tearing me up. Burn! Wiener. And his bear is gone. Darn it. At least I got meat. Don't know if it was worth it, but maybe I got some XP from it. Okay. Moving on. Come on. Take it easy. I want to check if I gotten any alchemy. Yeah, because I got the water hag stuff. Okay, I need Dwarven Spirit and some Water Essence. Can I... Can I make that? No, I need... to some other stuff. Can I read while I'm on the horse? Nope. Come on, Roach. Notice board, eh? Gone is good location. Missing wife. Good people, take pity and hear my plea. My wife, Hannah, she's missing. 
A few days ago, she went into the woods and hasn't yet returned. I'm near out my wits with worry and will pay any price to the man who brings her back to me, or at least tells me where to look for her. Nell and Hunter from Blackbow. Okay. Right, milk. Milk will keep demons away. Huh? Oh. Marker. Is there anything else, sir? Master Richard, there's an elven burial ground in the caverns near about to meet cops, and the heat of monsters roaming about here. Okay. So then both forces attacked. One from either side. Cavalry swooped up from the wood. A wall of infantry marched from the swamp. Our boys wished to surrender, but the black ones would take no prisoners. They gathered up, stood in a circle, and cut down every last one like the butchers they were. Poppies cover the meadow now. Or perhaps they're king cups. Blood from the Jeez, buddy. Dark. I like the dark ages. Anything else around here? Okay. So, it looks like the map is trying to tell me to go this away and go that way. Uh, quest. So this is level five. Oh, we're continuing on with this one because it's the lowest level one so far. <laughs> Roach to me. Roach to me. To me, horse. I'm calling you. Ugh. Thank you. Come on. Whoa there, Roach. What am I hearing a lot of? Oh, it's the wind. Oh, it seems like I thought I heard lots of crows or something. What do you want? Rejoice, for even a creature as depraved and base in nature as you can serve the glory of the eternal fire. Someone must see to the corpses on the battlefield. Necrophages defile those not already rotting in mass graves. This is not that's to be my good deed for the day. A handsomely profitable one, I might add. I know your kind don't work for free. All right, I'll take care of it. This will count amongst your merits. The more good one works in life, the more hallowed things are. Yes, splendid. Here are the holy oils. Dash generously and set alight, understood? I wish it to flare up to the sky. For the glory of the eternal fire and all that. Once I've incinerated the bodies, where will I find you? I shall be near the bridge to Novigrad. Okay. Funeral of Pyres.
Can I take that? Can I loot it? If I get in trouble? I'll come back. Uh, this funeral pyre thing. Oh, nope. Still doing this one. That's level 10. And we're moving. Who's that? Oh, more dogs. That's okay. Come on, Roach. Whoa there, Roach. Oh, Necrophage. Uh Dance, dance. Don't tell me what to do, man. Unbind them till the next one's come. When they come, I'll tend to them. Meanwhile, let's you and me chat. To know who I'm untying. John Verdon served in the 10th Maribor Division. Long way from your army. The army don't exist no more. Black One smashed it to bits. I scarpered off into the woods just before that happened. Join a group of refugees, fucking bursting with patriotism they were. As soon as they learned I'd abandoned Tamaria in her hour of need, they beat me down, tied me up like a turkey, left me to the drowners. Fine, I'll help. Oh, thanks. For a minute there, I was almost sure you'd leave me to die. I'd like to thank you somehow, but I'm not a chip crown to me name. Tough. I'll take the loss. Thanks, Witcher. May you prosper on the path. The path? What's the path? What path are we talking about? Is there anything here? I can loot? Anything at all? He had nothing. Nada. There's a guy here dead. Kind of weird, but okay. Well, no man should be left like that. If you're gonna kill him, just kill him. Don't leave him to some monsters. Jeez. Take it easy. Wait, what does it say here? Caution: A large contingent of traitors has deserted the Imperial Army camp. The patrol has made them outlaws and common bandits. Until the deserters are caught and punished, it is prudent to avoid any all contact with them. Okay. Oh, I'm staying on the road. Just staying on the road right now. Wait, I'm going this way. Go, go.
slow now. Whoa. And the crossroads. Let's go. Slow now. What? Kind of weird. Read. Missing Tamara Stranger. Stranger? Daughter of the Bloody Baron, presumed kidnapped. Hardy reward forever finds her or brings her in. Okay. First, go here. Looking for a man goes by Hendrick. What do you want with him? Want to talk to him? What about? Give me a bottle of something strong. two swords wonder if he keeps an extra prick in his trousers too you fucking deaf gonna say who you are or do I need to loosen your tongue with me knife how about I buy everybody around why would you got the coin for it simple as that I don't drink with strangers we share around, won't be strangers anymore. Then we go our separate ways. And which way might yours be? On my way to Novigrad. City of Gors and Hornbeaters. Who are you? Oh, I. And why do you care? like to know who I'm drinking with, just like you. We're the Baron's men, and you're in his land. A Baron holds these lands? Must be quite a man. Doesn't seem to care a lick about all the Imperials here. More and more arriving, too. Bloody Baron's not some poncy prick son of a rich lord, so no, he's not allowed to piss his riches at the side of a black winged head. But this is interesting stuff. Our Baron the way we want it. And if that strikes anyone as wrong, well, we encourage them to speak their mind. To your health and mine. Bottoms up. If you want a rest, come with me. On the bench you can use. And there's the bumpkin with what looks like his son. That's on the pretty side, I think of myself. I say probably disguised his daughter. <laughs> Orson's always managed to hide their lasses. Thought he'd outsmarted me, the arse wife. Mean he hadn't. I plowed the snot out of that little shit. Man, that's whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> Must have surprised the old coot. Very wet himself. This is bandit. Bandit. Well, I took the, uh, I guess the Paragon way. Thanks. 
thanks for not starting a row with those swine. I don't generally poke my nose in other people's business. Looking to stay the night? No. Hmm. I'm looking for Hendrik. Man lives in Heatherton. Don't know where that is. Other side of the hill. Looked that away this morning, saw a strange glow. Imperials on the raid, perhaps. But who knows? Anything else you can tell me about Hendrik? Odd fellow. Arrived who knows where and for no apparent reason. Shacked up with a widow whose husband was stabbed for a scrap of bread. Baron's men don't like strangers. Aye, he stays out of their way. Always seems to know when they're coming. Always manages to disappear. Thanks, Andy. Hmm. Interesting. Is there any persons of interest around here? What's going on over there? Jeez, man. So much. So this bandit. So these guys are robbing them? I didn't realize that these were actually like people robbing them. Oh, some really messed up stuff. I knew that they were actually bandits. Man. Okay. Take a bunch of this stuff. Missing Mikkel. My true born brother Mikkel is missing. Anyone who finds him or at least finds out what fate has met him will generously will be generously rewarded, and I'll slip a good word to the Baron about you as well. You'll follow me at the inn at the crossroads, Bruno. I think I actually was looking at him just a moment ago. Okay. Kind of weird in how all this is going. Oh, that's level three. No, that's level 33. In Oman's land, Geralt was given a contract by Eternal Fire Priest. His task, to burn the bodies of soldiers who had fallen during the recent battle in order to keep necrophages from eating them. Well, let's do this. Weird. How far away am I from all that? That's it, Roach. This one's on the way, so I might as well do this one.
Inventory. Do do do. I'm a dancing. What the heck? Oh, my God. Got myself an eye. Are these not the bodies? Gotcha. Okay, I don't know why it's red like that, but whatever. Loot. Okay. Okay, back to the horse. And now I should go... South. I see a bear. Do I dare? Why not? Man, he's running pretty. Where are you going there, buddy? Now that I pissed you off. Come on. Oh, you're not dead yet. You're not dead yet. Now you're dead. Oh, where am I going? Faster. I thought I was going the right way. 
It changed up on me. Wait, huh? Okay, the game says go one way and go another way. I'm going south. I don't know why the game keeps telling me, go south, go north, go south, go north. Going south. Don't listen to the game. Go south. Okay, I don't know what's going on. And I know I saved it just recently, but whatever. Yeah, sure stinks like a mass grave. Oh! Now for the only miles. <laughs> yeah, hold on, I'm I'm busy. Give me a second there, girl. around is there no loot this time nope no loot okay and fire go that way. South east. Alright Roach, let's do this. Is there even a road here? It's kind of convenient. Run, Roach. Okay, I gotta actually get off the road now. Come on. You know what? Let me prepare for the next one already. Oh, I guess I still had enough uh, charges. Yeah, let's not uh, use up all our stamina. Eh?
We still talking about a priest of the eternal fire? I'd say so. Meat stain pricks can't be trusted. This one had ordered premium grade fist tech from me three times, everything perfect, but the fourth, his man came at us with knives, sought to knock us out of trade. Shoved me in that ditch with the corpses. Must have thought the ghouls would take care of the rest. And to make sure, he hired a witcher to burn the bodies, destroy any evidence. A witcher? Meaning you? So what now? Nothing. Didn't pay me to burn the living. Oh, thank the gods, it's true what they say. Though mutants, you live by a code. Oh, thank you, witcher. Wow. First things first, I'm gonna loot. Okay, is that all the, uh, Lootable items? Nope. Any more lootable items? I don't see any more. Now for a shot of Igni. And Fire B! Okay, so, seems like he was betray betrayed because they wanted weapons, and on the fourth, I guess, shipment, they jumped him, and that's way up there. I'll come back to this one. Main quest, that's what I was doing. Three. Okay. Back to the world map. And I'm going... I'm going to go back to the end, so I need to go northwest. Northwest. Come on now, use that compass. Hey there. And I am going to go to the town here. Some meditating until daybreak. Oh, I hit level four. So, does that mean okay? I have an extra spot, and that's all done. Let's go. Tolerance, increased potion overdose, 
poison blades, oil plated blades gives a 3% chance of poisoning the target on each hit. The chance is greater the higher the level of oil used. Steady aim. Time is slowed a further 15% while aiming bombs. Well, I don't really use that. Acquired tolerance. Every known level 1 alchemy formula increases maximum toxicity by 1. Frenzy. If toxicity is above 0, time automatically slows when an enemy is about to perform a counterattack. You know what? I liked the poison blades. Because I've been using a lot of oil. Oil applied to blades. Well, what's down below it? Protective coating. Adds 5% protection against attacks from the monster type to the oil targets. Okay. Yes, I want that. And activate. Oh, look at that. Okay. And next level, oil applied to blades gives a 6% chance of poisoning the target. Okay, potion duration time plus 10%. Potion? Oh, okay, so that means I'll have like the swallow a little bit longer. Good to know. Is it longer though? I guess it is. Uh, okay. Um. And we're going. Not so fast, Roach. Are you guys friendly? Guys on horses. Yes. I guess you are. Let's go. You're yeah, you're you're at least not killing me. So I guess that's friendly. Oh, I guess that flame is from what I what I used. Ah, dogs. I think I've been this way already. Yeah, because then this will take me up to that town that was at, unless I hit this fencer. With the bandits. So, hmm. I would like to be able to do 
lot of good deeds, but I mean, if I save the village, then I don't know. Hard thing to see. But then again, the world is like that. Okay, where am I going now? Okay, I'm going that way. Are you guys friendly? You guys look friendly enough. Best give crow perch a wide berth. We're simple folk who seek no quarrel. I got no problem with that. I have no clue what you guys are doing here. Uh, I'm not going to take from you guys. You're not trying to kill me, so I guess that's a good thing. Wait, I got to do something important. Oh, my lip. All right. Ah, a little bit more fuel. So where the heck am I going? Oh, I'll obviously look for this agent in a village called Hankerton. Or Heatherton. Wait, what the heck? What is this? Why is there... Why is the ground red here? Am I missing something? Something was here. I don't know. Weird. They didn't give me any winter sense to stuff, so Whoa there, Roach. Hmm. We got rain. We got snow. horse here just in case Dang it. Oh my gosh. Calm down. 
it's over. Aye, it's over. All's past, never to be restored. I'll not forget that ever. Looking for a man named Hendrik, supposed to live in this village. Aye, he did. No longer. They nabbed him in that hut. If you'd have heard the cries, sir. If you'd have heard how a man can scream, how he can suffer. Tell me what happened here, step by step. They took him. Took him all. The sun was waning, see, and the dusk went crimson like blood. Thought to myself, strange, the tones, I cannot hear them. Then he begged. By the end, he could do naught but moan. 